So today I'm going to be showing you how you can make a basket out of literally any yarn. I have used worsted weight. I have like worsted weight acrylic. I have used, I've used a four weight cotton. I have used blanket yarn. I think probably the only thing I haven't done is like a three weight, a two weight or a one weight, because that would take literally forever to make a basket like that. Four weight and above is the best, but technically you could make a little tiny miniature basket out of much smaller yarn. Um, but today I'm going to be using this Patons Pure Wet, and it is a kind of like a tape yarn, um, but it fluffs out. It is very, very similar to a Red Heart Sachet. And I have a video that I will link for you where I did haul this yarn. Um, I'm assuming it is old, you know, outdated, discontinued, because um, I haven't seen this type of yarn sold in stores for quite a while. I thrifted this. Um, it was a clean thrift store. Nothing is off-putting about this. It was clean, it's fresh smelling. And I thought the colors on this were absolutely beautiful. It is called Spring Green. And I'll bring this up here so you can see. This is my hair that's stuck to it, not someone else's. So beautiful. I mean, Spring Green really is the most appropriate colors. And I thought I would make a little basket for my daughter to put on her desk. She is a... Um, remote worker and so she works 100% from home and I know that um, you know when you're at home all the time or even when you're at your desk at work it can sometimes get a little cluttered it can feel like kind of a downer being at it all the time so I thought I would make her something cute and fresh um, and just cheerful um, so that she could put any of her little supplies in that she wanted to so I really like um, a thicker yarn, even though, like I said, you can make it out of a worsted. Um, but this yarn is, um, if you were to spread it out, it gets like really big. I, they used to make like scarves and stuff out of this, um, but I'm going to be using it as though it is a tape yarn. And I have got, for this project, I have got an 8.5 millimeter crochet hook. I have found when I've made other baskets out of this type of yarn that this eight and a half works really great. I want mine to be tight enough that, you know, nothing falls through. And also the tighter you get it, it holds a little bit more structure to it. We are going to go ahead and start this out. I prefer to do a magic ring or magic loop, however you want to say that. And my friend Jesse, we just did a project together not that long ago. Um, she had a tutorial on her channel of how to make a magic ring, and I will link that down in the description box. Um, but one time I was watching a video from that Southern, this Southern girl can, and um, she described a magic ring in a way that like finally made it make sense for me um, because I, I was struggling with the twists and the turns and stuff. And she said a magic ring or magic loop is just a slip knot you haven't finished. If you want to play it fast and loose like I do, here's how I do it. I just kind of wrap it around there and I bring that up and I just let that loop hang loose and I go ahead and I start my crochet right there. So I've got my tail and with this particular project, you do want to leave a little extra in here just so that you have room um, to, to get it all in because it is pretty thick. I am going to be doing half double crochet because I just want this to move along and um, that will be plenty for me. So I went ahead and I chained two and I'm going to go ahead and yarn over and I am going to put in, you guys, this is kind of embarrassing. I'm going to go ahead and get a bigger hook. I'll be right back. All right, so <laughs> part of this project is being able to improvise a little bit. Like I said, if you're doing it with any yarn at all, um, any yarn in your stash, you might not grab the right hook right away. So I bumped this up from an eight and a half to a 10. Now this hook right here 
is a Susan Bates, I believe, and it is one of those inline, I think this is called inline, right there. And the other one I was using was the boy hook where it was a little more rounded. So this one's a little more pointed. So let's see if this will work with this type of yarn right here. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my magic ring. I don't know if you can see my cat who is choosing to make this difficult for me. Hey, stop. He is just over a year old and is still a kitten basically and is still very, very playful. All right, so I chain two and I'm gonna go ahead and put in a few more of my half double crochets. Yeah, I think this is the size that'll work, so I should be okay here. I do still want it to be tight enough, and I am going to have to tighten up my ring a little bit ah, as I go. I think this yarn is just way too enticing for this little guy. I don't have the heart to send him downstairs right now. So I've got three in here so far. And I like to do um, enough that it's not overly crowded, um, but I do want a fairly decent center here. So what do I have here? One, two, three, four, five. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop at six for this. Pull this a little bit tighter where I put that sixth one in there. You know, if you were using a, like a four weight, a worsted yarn, you would probably want to put maybe 10 in to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and cinch this up and I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into that very first of my chain. This uh, sachet style yarn, of course, is going to be a harder type of yarn to work with uh, because of its construction but i just think it um, was such a pretty yarn i only had the one skein of it so i was very limited on the projects that i could do with it and i did i pay, i thrifted it so i paid a dollar for it so i thought this would be good but if you were brand new um, i'm not really sure this type of yarn would work best if you're wanting a real thick yarn i would go with a blanket yarn uh, so I did my chain and this next row is going to be increases. So each of these six stitches is going to get two stitches in it. And I'm going to be honest, it is of course a little hard to see your stitches in there and that's, it's okay if you mess up and put it in slightly the wrong place. It's okay. As long as it is roughly the size and shape of a circle, you're okay. Also, no one's going to know if you accidentally don't put a stitch in or if you put an extra one in. This is not a project where you have to be real militant about how you're doing it. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and do two stitches in each of these. And remember, I am doing the half doubles, but you could do singles. I would suggest that stiffer the yarn you're using, the the larger stitches you can use but the softer and more flexible yarn you're using you need to use smaller stitches so when i did mine out of cotton i did use single crochets in the whole thing and that was a four weight yarn and it did take a little while to complete that one where this will whip up real quickly and I have also done a large basket that I did out of blanket yarn that I had won in an Ogo contest. I do have a video on that Ogo contest. Um, I had filmed it in reference to another uh, Yarnspiration contest that was going on. So kind of ignore the part where I'm telling you to go enter this contest because that is long since uh, been over. But in the video, I just share my experience about uh, the Yarnspirations Ogo contest, Get Ogoing, that I won. Or that basket I made with blanket yarn, um, I wanted it to be a large basket. And 
I will go ahead and insert what that looks like because I actually use it ironically to hold blanket, but I wanted it just in my room. So there are certain colors that I had that I thought would work real well. And in that one, the blanket yarn, even though it's a big thick yarn, since I wanted it to be so tall um, and I wanted some structure in it, I did use single crochets in that one. So here I am finishing up my second round and I want to make sure this lays flat. So I'm actually going to add in an extra stitch right in here to help bridge that gap a little bit because um, I might have gotten my tension a little bit tight or whatever. So now I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into that first chain. There we go. So I've got the bottom here. And the thing I like to do too with um, these, if this is going to be a shallow dish, I want this part to look nice. So I'm going to make sure that when I do my sides that I, um, you know, have the, the, the underside, the tail end down there. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't get flipped around. Now this next row of increases, I think I am just going to do one more row of increases because I have a limited amount of yarn. It doesn't look like it, but I think there's only... There's only 24 yards in here, so it is a pretty small amount of yarn. In this third round I'm doing, I am going to have in the first stitch one half double crochet, and in the second stitch I'm going to have two half double crochets, then one half double crochet, two half double crochets. So there will be like three in each sequence that goes by, and my tape yarn does want to slip just a little bit. I apologize if you hear my dog going berserk. Um, my husband is outside and we are not like actual farmers or real farmers at all. We have an acreage and that's it. But we have a small tractor um, just to kind of do different acreage chores. And so my husband is outside on that. And I hope you don't hear the background uh, noise from that. But then uh, my dog is going berserk because he has some separation anxiety and it drives him bonkers when he can see my husband but cannot be out there with him. So again, my apologies for that. And I am getting right up here to the end of my round. I really like how these greens are looking together. I just think it looks very like soft and gentle and kind of like a meadow. Your last stitch should be the increase one. So I'm going to have two in this stitch right here. Okay. My dog just came up here. I don't know if you can see him or not. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch and bring that together. So here is the bottom of my basket. At this point, we need to start with the sides. So we are going to do, um, we are only going to be crocheting into one side of our stitches up here so that it makes a nice turn. So it's not just, how do I want to say it? So there's a defined edge on this. So we are going to be crocheting into the, my cat just sped through here and about <laughs> knocked over my tripod. Sorry about that. Um, so we are just going to be crocheting into this top loop right up here. And it is pretty easy. And there goes another animal. And then as you can see, since this is sideways and we're, we want to build this up, we're going to be going in the front loops. I know a lot of times we're used to doing projects, like if it's going to be a ribbed project with going into the back loop of it, um, but this is the front loop. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to put, especially in this bending row, I'm going to do single crochets. So I'm going to go into the top loop, bring that through. I'm going to get a couple going here and then I'm going to give you a close up of what that looks like. I'll pull this a little bit here. So as you can see, I've got this started right here and it is creating since I'm going into that top loop. 
So right here will be my next one. Right here I will be ignoring the bottom loop, the back loop. I'll be going into the front loop. You can see how that ridge is really starting. And here is the inside of it. What I have done when I've been working on a larger project, this one is small enough that it does not bother me to um, be working here and you know be working on the opposite side of it far away from me. But when I was doing my larger basket project, um, I think my the bottom of my basket went out like 10 or 12 inches and so to be holding the basket and working on it out here was not very conducive for me at all so what i did is once i made my initial chain right here so pretend this is my initial chain i flipped it and started working the opposite way around so that I could be working with the close side of it next to me instead of the far side, if that makes sense. So I would have turned it and gone this way instead of just making my chain and working my way. But again, this is small enough that it's not uh, a problem at all for me. Sometimes with this sachet type of yarn, you do have to kind of pull it out um, a little bit with your fingers just to get it and make sure you are grabbing at it in the right place. And I am coming up here, getting closer to my initial chain. Here's the last stitch before my chain. And I am going to go ahead and slip stitch into that first one. And I'm going to go ahead and put one stitch in there just so you can see that a little better. So I'll bring this up closer. And you can see how this has started forming right here all right so i'm going to show you what i was talking about before when i make my chain here and like i said with this project it is small enough i can keep going around but i can go ahead and flip this and start going this way so that it is a little bit easier on my arm now from this point on we have this ridge here so we do not need to keep going into that front loop we can go ahead and just go through both loops from here on out so it does make it a little bit easier to go goes a little bit quicker you don't have to look quite as closely and judging by my pile of yarn here i do believe this will be my last row of this little basket. You will want to manage your tension just a little bit. You want it tight enough um, that your basket has some shape and form and structure, but you don't want to pull it so tight and have so much tension that it ends up, you know, like caving in. This would be a fun project to do with some like kind of suede-like texture um of yarn or this would be a good thing you could make you could definitely make some of these out of plarn like when you cut up the plastic bags to make yarn i had seen um ginger the yarn geek make some plarn and i had gotten a little adventurous and took all of our bags and cut them up and it turns out you need an insane amount of yarn to make anything out of plarn, or you need an insane amount of plastic bags to make plarn. So I did abandon that project pretty quickly when I found out how little I was actually crocheting. But it, you know, it'd be something where if you just wanted to go over time and just do a little here and there, you most definitely could. So I have met up, and I'm going to go ahead and add my slip stitch here. Here is how my little basket is looking so far. I think it is pretty darn cute. I think she will be happy with this. Um, I like how you can see my edge down here at the bottom. I've got this much yarn, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make one more pass at this. If there isn't enough, I will take it out. Um, I have also at times done it where, um, I have gone down so just to use up the last little bit so maybe just do like slip stitch around the top row uh, to use it up you know or if you were using a half double or something like that you could 
you know, go down to a single. I just think this is a great way to use up scrap yarn. Um, you know, making a scrappy one with a bunch of different colors of scrap yarn would look very cute. Or like a planned scrap one where you just, um, you know, use like all colors that are in your color scheme for that particular room um, and just randomly, you know, in like random increments. Um, or even, you know, taking it a little differently and you know doing like stripes around it doing a pattern the possibilities are really pretty endless as far as this project goes i feel like i'm not smiling as much as i should be in this because i'm concentrating and i feel like you're seeing my concentrating face a little more <laughs> than i would like and not my smiling face. So I do apologize. I am not grumpy. I am in a good mood today. It is a Saturday morning and we are just chilling at home. The temperature is perfect. It's like 70 degrees outside. Um, so it is a great day. No grumpiness here. So I am getting closer to my end here. You know, this would be something too, where if, you know, a lot of us have some kind of random weird yarns in our stash, you could do like a, you could do like a raffia, um, yarn with this would be nice. You could do, um, let's see, what else could you do? Uh, some t-shirt yarn would work real well in this project as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's really whatever you feel like. So I might have enough to go around this one more time, or I could make like a little bow, some little decoration or something to go on this, or I might end up frogging this back out and making it one row bigger around. So I will go ahead and catch up with you in a few minutes after I decide how I'm going to use up the rest of this. All right, I got my basket finished and I tell you what, this was some serious yarn chicken at the end. This is all I had left. It's like two inches of tail right here. So, I mean, I did leave my initial starting tail kind of big. Anyway, I ended up frogging out the sides and going back to my initial three rounds. I know it doesn't look quite as neat here on the bottom, um, but I did the initial three rounds of increases and then I did my front loop only around to make this edge. And then I had realized when I was doing this that I was concentrating so much on the talking that since my front row uh, or front loop crochets to make the edge were single crochets, I kept single crocheting at the edge because I was like thinking about what I was talking about. So I did go ahead and do my um, around here. So this was the right down here is where you see that single crochet in the front loop. And then this row right here is my half double crochets all the way around. And then I went ahead and did a slip stitch around the very top to use up the rest of the yarn. And I really like how it kind of like gives it a little more of a finished off look at the top. And um, it does make it a little bit thicker right there too. So this, I have not tied this off and woven it in just cause I wanted you to see how little I had left. So I will, um, you know, put a knot in there and tighten that up and sew that in. And I will get a few photos so you can see how it looks up close, but very, very easy. I will have the instructions down in the description box. And like I said, this is applicable to any single yarn you use. You just have to adapt as far as your uh, hook size and then also, you know, the structure. And if it's standing up nice or if it's too floppy, you definitely want to go ahead and um, use smaller, more compact stitches. If it is a little bit bigger, you can get by. Um, like I said earlier, you have to base it on the project with the yarn and how big you want your basket to be. 
I appreciate you watching this video. If this was something you enjoyed, I would love it if you would subscribe. I just do a lot of practical projects that work out into my um, life here and just things that you can whip up and have fun doing if you don't have a ton of extra time, but you love crochet. Thanks for talking yarn with me.